Hey there guys, today we're taking a look at Ready or Not running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H. Now this is running on the B-Link SER5 mini PC. Now the game is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR set to the performance preset. And once we do all of that, we actually do get a pretty decent frame rate. Our 1% lows for the most part stay pretty decent, it really just depends. Sometimes as you load into new areas, things have to load in and the 1% lows will end up dropping, but for the most part the experience of actually Actually playing it is pretty consistent in terms of frame rate but there is a problem in the sense that FSR at the performance preset really destroys the visual quality here at 1080p for example in this section here I'm shooting at an enemy that I can barely see off in the distance I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is that I'm even shooting at if it wasn't for the fact that there was motion involved you know the person moving I would not have even seen them because it was kind of just a smudge to me in the distance and that's really the biggest downside to actually using FSR in the performance preset that the visual quality impact is pretty significant. The performance is pretty decent in general. Our 1% lows are at a range where it is at least somewhat acceptable, especially considering that this isn't exactly a competitive shooter or anything like that. Though it is a game where at any moment you could just be instantly killed by one of these enemies. So having as much information as possible and what I mean by information is just as high of a frame rate and as high of a resolution, the better since some Sometimes you're going to be fighting enemies at a distance and at any moment one bullet can kill you and one bullet can kill them. So it's not exactly the most ideal situation really in terms of actually playing it. Again, the frame rate is pretty decent. I mean, those averages are really nice to see and the 1% lows are more than fine. Though if you look at the frame times, they do spike up like crazy all over the place. So it doesn't exactly feel the smoothest to play. But it really goes along with the fact that there is a pretty major disparity between the 1% lows and the FPS average. So again, not the greatest experience in the world, but in general, it is doable if it wasn't for the fact that the visual quality is so severely impacted. This is one of those things where you can get away with playing it if you're really, really desperate to play this with your friends. But I think you will struggle to find this to be a incredible experience or anything like that. And it might even lead to some pretty major frustration if you just end up dying to an enemy that you could barely see. Now, I did try to turn up FSR to the balance preset, and this did make a pretty no noticeable difference in terms of the visual quality but in general what ended up happening is we took a pretty major impact in terms of performance and our one percent lows are now at a range where things really start to feel pretty heavy in terms of actually playing if our one percent lows were closer to 30 fps i would say that it, the trade-off would be worth it because getting a 52 fps average it does not feel that bad but it's those dips all the way down to 23 that really drag this down and it's a shame because visually speaking Speaking, the uplift is noticeable enough that I think it's worthwhile, especially because enemies at a distance are a lot easier to actually see. But as it stands right now, it really is just up in the air on whether or not you're going to want to be able to play like this. And again, if you pay attention to those frame time charts, there are so many spikes happening all the time that this isn't a one off drop down to 22 FPS or anything like that. It, we are consistently dipping down low and it is making everything feel really, really sluggish, really, really heavy. And it's a unfortunate because we really have to sacrifice so much visually just to get this to be at a playable range. So I would say that the game is playable with an asterisk. It really is going to be up to you on whether or not the visual quality impact is going to be worthwhile. But if you're thinking about buying the game and you have this system or you have this APU in general, I would say hold off. The game is really expensive for what you're getting here. I just don't think that it's really going to be that worthwhile. But anyways, I, I hope you guys found this look at Ready or Not running on the AMD Ryzen and 5600H to be useful, interesting, or entertaining. If you're interested in picking up this mini PC, you can with the Amazon affiliate links down below. It's definitely a very powerful system, but this is just a heavy game, and there are plenty of other games that you can actually play on there really, really well. Check out the rest of the channel if you're interested in looking at that. Maybe with a bit more optimization to the game, we could actually end up getting this to be a playable experience, because if the 1% lows could be improved, this could be a really, really nice experience. But anyways, I will catch you in the next one.